It's going to be this one right here, okay? It is a butter egg pattern. It's got these like tulipy, uh, tulip shaped sleeves that are like open. It's like a two piece sleeve. But um, there's two different front openings. Fronts, sorry, fronts. One is a round neck that's just solid, and the other one is a V neck that has like a big pleat type thing in the front and I'm actually going to be doing this bodice with these sleeves. Oh yeah, I think that that's going to lay nicer. All right, sometimes you just have to go through the process of trying things. Okay, so I have this pressed up here. You can see my little loop and I'm just going to set that aside for a minute um, because I need to do the facing on the front piece. So here I have my Front. Remember, it has the dart or the yeah, this pleat up here, and here is my interfacing. Now, the one mark that it has on here is the very center point, and I like to mark those because it gives me something to aim for. Sometimes, when you're coming to a V or something like that, it's a little bit hard to remember where. Uh, the exact center of this is, you know. So I like to mark that one. And before I sew this on, I am going to come back with my serger and serge down and back up on the outside edge. And you can see I have quite a bit to trim on this edge here, which is fine. These things happen. Slippery fabrics, especially. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go serge this. Be right back. I actually marked that on the wrong side. I'm not going to be looking at this side. I'm looking at the interfacing side. Didn't know what I was thinking there. So I'm going to remark it, making sure my point lines up. Hang on. I'm going to make sure my point lines up with my seam down there. Okay. So I can just lay this along that seam line and mark it right there. All right. So now I know where I'm aiming for. Pin this little piece in place here. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and match it up and sew it from the top down and then back up, but making sure I come all the way to this point and that's where I pivot. And I want to show you one other thing. When I was pressing um, this fabric after I pressed this pleat, I probably stretched it out. Oh, every time I touch something with water in my hand, it makes a spot. Don't worry about it. It evaporates. Anyhow, back to where I was. Um, I did not use any stay, st stay tape or anything on here. Um, if I was to do this again, I probably would, especially if it was a better fabric. I would putting stay tape along here because it's cut on the bias is a good idea. Um, but because of that, it did stretch out a little bit. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. But when I sew it, I'm going to make sure that I match up the top, match up this point, split the difference halfway here, okay, and um, put this down on the bottom next to the feed dogs, and I will just ease that fullness in. So if you see it, that's what it is. Stay tape along here definitely would have kept that from, from making that stretch, but at this point, for this garment, I can fix it. So if you're kind of new to sewing, I want to show you what I mean, because I've mentioned it a few times that, oh, I'll just ease that in as I go. I'll ease that in as I go. So this is what I mean. The shorter side I put on top, okay? 
the longer side that has a little bit of extra, I put on the bottom. And the little, these down here that grab the fabric, those are the feed dogs. And so the idea is that while I'm sewing, hang on, let me get this started really quick. Okay. So the idea is that as I'm sewing, if I hold this nice and tight, I'm going to keep the top very, very taut, but the bottom is kind of loose. All right, and as long as I can make sure that this edge here is level, those feed dogs are going to pull that bottom part in. So I'm just putting a little bit of pressure here. So when I flip it over, it'll be an invisible ease. It's just going to work a little bit in to every single stitch so that you won't have a pucker, hopefully. Um, it'll just all kind of magically fit back together again. So that's what I mean when I say that. So let me just go ahead and finish down this way. And I'm going to come all the way down to this point right here. Okay, and then back it up one, go forward one, pivot and turn with my needle down. Make sure I have my edges aligned nicely and it's the same thing. I have excess on the bottom part on this side too. So the same thing where I'm holding this top part tighter. So when I get up here to the top, everything should be good. So let me flip that over and we'll see. Okay, so this side here, I actually eased probably about half an inch in, and there's no puckers or anything. It's just nice and, and straight. So that's what I mean when I say easing it in with the feed dogs. All right, so now I'm going to clip down to, but not through my stitches. Okay, so it's very, very close to the edge there. And I am going to trim down this seam allowance also. All right, so I have it turned and pressed. And if you've watched any other of my videos, you probably know I usually, usually is the word, understitch everything, but I'm actually not, even though the instructions say to understitch it. And that is because I'm going to be using a somewhat different method of sewing the shoulder seams, which would make, make it even more difficult if it was understitched. And also this fabric's so lightweight, it's not gonna, it's not really a big problem. It, it wants to hold that crease pretty easily. So that's not a big deal. Um, but before I get into that, I am just going to tack this bottom um, facing onto this little pleat part. And I'm just doing it underneath here where it's not going to be visible from the front, up here at both edges and in the very center. Now I'm going to sew my shoulders together. I'm going to do it slightly differently than usual. First thing I'm going to do is make sure I have my uh, seams here lined up exactly. And I'm going to stick a pin right where that seam is. Okay. Now I am going to move that over a bit so that these top edges line up here. Now remember they wanted us to ease up here, so this edge is probably about a quarter inch longer. So I'm going to match up those edges and just like I did before, I will ease this in as I sew it. Okay. Um, but here's what I'm going to do that's a little bit different. Actually, I have a little sample here so I can show you. It might make more sense on this. So 
if these are my two fabric pieces and we're going to pretend these pieces of tape are my interfacing okay so what I did is I had them together you know everything's flat kind of like this is everything is flat and then I turned both facings over to one side so both of these facings I will turn this way okay but trying to keep this pen right on the edge pin it this way all right so when I'm sewing I'm actually going to sew it like this and what that is going to do is so say I sew that and after I sew it I can clip this corner and when I go to open it up what's going to happen is both facings are going to be together on the inside and it's going to look fine on the outside hopefully but the thing is this is never going to want to flip up because it's actually stitched all the way down here so that's what I'm trying to do with this seam okay so I'm going to start on this inside part here stitch it normally just past the facing and then well you can see I don't even need to stretch this the ease is just kind of working itself in there so I'm not going to worry about that just pin it normally and I'm going to go sew that um, at 5 8 inch all the way across so I've sewn it straight across like that and when I was sewing it you know I fold the seam allowance in so this is the side view so I'm going to go ahead and clip some of the bulk out of this corner up here and turn it open. And I'll need to press this shoulder. But by doing it that way, this seam allowance is pressed towards the back on its own. Yeah, let me lay it down here flat like this so once I press this this will be nice and flat here's my seam I don't have to worry about this wanting to poke out uh, I'm gonna trim off this little piece here that wants to expose itself okay and everything's nice and flat so I don't think I had shown that way of doing a shoulder seam before so I wanted to to get that in here so I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side now Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. I put it up on here, um, one, to get it out of the way, and also to make sure that I was going to have plenty of room in the hips. And I do, so I think that's going to be fine. It actually looks like I'm going to have plenty of room everywhere, but that's nice because I wanted a loose, a loose blouse. So my point in the front comes down nice. Another reason I did the shoulder thing on this blouse is I don't like my facings to be loose, but this fabric is so light I didn't actually, I, I would prefer not to have sewing thread marks on this just because I just didn't feel like it. So I'm going to be sewing a little black shank button right here to put that on. And so now I'm ready to go ahead and get started with the sleeves. Okay, so the view I'm doing, it's like a tulip seat sleeve, and um, it's going to be kind of like this down here at the bottom where it's two pieces and it has a nice little tulipy drape down there. So you actually need to work in two pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do is work on this one because um, that's where I need to ease in my sleeve cap. So I have four different little circles that I'm going to punch out and mark on the top of each of these sleeves. I got my two pieces that are shaped like this marked and I'm going to be crimping up here to ease this in but this whole tulipy side is going to be a rolled hem type of a edging I think right now. But what I want to do is I'm going to actually serge around the top edge and then straight down. This is the part where a seam is going to be where I'm joining the two piece, the two pieces of sleeve. 
Um, and I want to make sure that this isn't going to fray, and up here, this isn't going to fray. But all of this is going to be enclosed, the bottom part, and up here is going to be enclosed in a rolled hem, so I'm not too worried about that right now. So on both of these pieces, uh, surging up here and straight down. Okay, so I have that part done, so now I'm going to take this sleeve, and I am going to be surging again the very top part, and this, which is the seam that is going to be sewed here. So I'm going to do that part on both of these pieces. These are surged on those two, two sides. I'm going to go ahead and pin um, this seam, you know, starting up here at the top. And then I will be sewing this at 5 8 and pressing this seam allowance open on both of the sleeves. All right, so this is my big sleeve piece now. And actually, before I get into easing any of the sleeve head up here, I'm going to go ahead and hem this. And um, I know I had mentioned I'm playing with the idea of putting the little fringe around the edge. And I think I'm going to hem it first. And if I want to do that, I can come back and add it afterwards. So what I need to do in these corners is to ease that, okay? So instead of running a gathering stitch and tightening that up, I'm gonna do the finger crimping method around this corner and this corner here, okay? Because that's quite a bit that we need to ease in there. So I'll take you to my machine and show you how to do that. And I'm trying to crimp about an eighth of an inch in just like this. So what I do is I put my finger up against the back of my presser foot and push down while I sew. And I'm going to actually do this curve and then just go straight to the other side and then do the second curve. So the way I'm doing this is where my little stitching line is, I'm folding it so that is at the edge, and then kind of folding it again. So I have about an eighth of an inch hem there, okay? Now I did crimp it, but like here you can see that the crimping, it helps, but it's not going to pull it in all the way. So what I'm going to do is put one pin here halfway through, And then in this section here, I'm just going to stick a straight pin through the stitching, give it a little tug, which is going to cinch that in just a little bit. And I can adjust it to however much I need. And push this all back down once I get it figured out. Like that. I don't want to run my rolled hem foot on this because um, it just doesn't do very well on curves. It does well on straights, but not so well on curves. So anyhow, I'm going to finish this. So basically I'm going to do the hem all the way starting up at one point, go all the way around and around and around and around, and up to this point right here. And I'm going to do that on both sleeves. Good morning. So I just kind of pinned those sleeves up there to get a look at it. But you can see it's got a little tulipy opening, which is cute. This is how the hem turned out, you know, which is just a basic hem. I decided not to put the trim on it. You know, I think it's fine the way it is. So anyway, from the front, it's going to have a nice little shape. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up these sleeves. So actually, before I get to putting the sleeves together, I need to come back and sew my side seams. I left those open until I could try it out on my dress form to make sure I didn't need any changes or anything, but it's good. So I'm going to go ahead and sew both of these side seams at 5 8 and then press those seam allowances open. So while I'm sewing the side seams, I wanted to point out, remember it wanted you to ease stitch up here around the bust area of the front piece. And I said, oh, I'm not going to do that. 
um, when you're sewing your side seams, make sure that you, you pin it and everything so everything aligns at the bottom. But there's a notch and then there's the upper area. This is the area where if there's any extra bubble, and there is, but it's not much. It's like very, very small. That's where you're going to ease that in. So I have it, you know, everything nice and level to this point. And then right here is where I'm going to ease this part in. And it probably wouldn't hurt anything if you eased it the entire way. It's just that this is the way that they have it set. So what I do is I reach underneath and I pull this level so it matches up, okay? Because here it's pooched out and I just pull it in so it's the right level. Hold my top one a little tighter. Now it's all eased in right up there. So just wanted to point that out. And actually before I put those sleeves on, I'm going to go ahead and sew my button on the back because I have almost lost it so many times. So if I can do this really quick, that will be good. And again, I'm just going to mark it real quick. So it's going to go right there. So let me just go ahead. What I'm putting on is just a tiny little shank button. I think it'll fit in there really cute. And um, as always, I put both tails through the eye of my needle so that I don't have to tie a knot. I'm going to pull it through my button here. And I can just slip my needle through that loop. And now I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and um, sew this button on, and then we'll work on the sleeves. You know, I'm looking at this, and this neckline is so large, you're never going to actually have to unbutton that to pull it over your head unless you have, like, super huge hairdo or something. So I'm thinking that this is more for looks, but still, it's a cute little accent. So anyhow, on to sleeves. Okay, so there's these three top dots on this wider piece here, and um, it wants you to run a uh, easing stitch up here. I'm just going to run, oh, I want to crimp it. I want to crimp it so badly. Yes, I am. I'm going to crimp this instead. So I will show you um, how I do that. Actually, it's the same way that I did it when I was going around the edges. So you've seen how to finger crimp it. I'm just going to do that up here between these dots. Okay, so this is my sleeve. Now on this piece here, there's a dot. So this dot here is going to match up with this dot here that the basting is based on. So I'm just going to line those two up like that. Get my little strings out. And this top of this sleeve just comes up here. So what I think the way that I'm going to tackle this is um, I'm going to baste it together up here above where my little crimp stitching is because if I need to take this in more I can just pull a little thread, you know. But if I have it basted up above it, it'll kind of work both of them together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for both of these sleeves right up here. I'm just hand basting just underneath my serging of this top part just to hold these two together. I think that's enough. I didn't actually want to put another row of machine stitching up there. So as soon as I get this done, I'm going to try to set these sleeves in. Okay, so they're going to set in here like this. This little shorter part is the front, the part that wraps around underneath. Um, that is the back. So, on this garment, this is my front and this is my back. So this is inside out, this is right side out, so I actually need this sleeve over here. I'm just going to match up the bottom, the top, the dots, and then, if there's any easing to be done at that little 
sleeve head up on top, we'll work that in too. So I wanted to show you, I've got it all pinned on, and this is up at the very top there. It's not much easing at all going on up there. But I'm going to go ahead and sew this at 5 8 and um, when I get to the underarm, I'm going to do a double row. So it'll go around once, and then at this point here, about where the notches are, I'll come in about an eighth of an inch and do a second row of stitching on the inside. Okay, so I've got my sleeves on, and I'm going to actually press the seam allowance towards the shoulder. Um, I'm not looking for a big poofy sleeve head here or anything, so I think that'll be nice. But what I'm using, it's just a little pressing mitt. Um, you can get them for about $3 or $4 on the tailoring, the Waywalk, whatever um, websites. But it's just nice because it's very lightweight and you can just stick it inside of things and hit it and it's just it's just a convenient little thing to keep you from burning your hands but that way I can get in here and just like just press this little part here and nothing else and it's very lightweight so anyhow you know very handy highly recommend it I'm going to finish pressing this little sleeve and then we'll work on the hem all right, so the last thing I need to work on is this bottom hem, and it is actually fairly straight. You know, it's got a little bit of curvy up here, near the side seams. But I'm actually going to use my rolled hem on this part. I think that it'll work okay for that, so let me go ahead and set that up. As always, using a rolled hem, is a, it's a love-hate thing. I'm just trying to take it slow and thankfully on this fabric it is lightweight enough that I am able to go straight over the seams. But because, you know, it's slightly curved, I'm just turning under the serge edge, holding it down, going a few inches, pulling it out again so that when I, I deal with those curves I can just kind of slowly ease it in as I go through. And even though this takes a while, it's still not as long as doing it by hand and it's not as troublesome as trying to put e-stitches in around the curve part. So, finish this up here. Well, here she is. And I think actually it turned out really cute. Can't wait to try her on. And I pressed, after I made the little rolled hem, I pressed it so that it would crease um, like the other crease that I pressed in. The sleeves pedal up here. Um, yeah, I think it's really cute. I'm gonna go try it out. So it's done and you know what it was pretty trouble free to make it and I was right you don't have to open up this button in the back to put it on at all there's plenty of room so if this whole thing with the button and all of the extra work that goes into that is going to be a pain for you you can skip it you can just make the back solid if you want to but it is kind of a cute design feature um, very comfortable with the sleeves the way they are, there's definitely nothing going to be binding there. And you know what? I think that it's, um, it's flattering. It's more of a grown-up person top than a uh, like college-y person top. But, you know, it probably would work for them too. But because there's like no gathers and puckers and everything, it's very flattering, I think. And it's comfortable. So I like it. I think this is a good one. Um, I don't think that I would try the other sleeve version just because I'm not into the tight sleeve with big ruffle on the bottom right now. You know, who knows about later, but not right now. But um, I like it a lot. So it's definitely, it's, it's the, the project that I was hoping that blue linen top that gave me so many fits, I was hoping that that would go together like this one. 
And that one was a nightmare, but this is nice. And I think that, you know, you could use all different kinds of fabrics with this. I, like I told you, I just used a silk looking polyester just because I wanted something that would, could go fancier if I wanted to. But like you see, I have it on with nice jeans and I think it's great. So hope you liked it. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>